Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, wherever you are. Thank you very much for making us a part of your day. I am Brad Franklin, creative content writer here in Chesterfield. And I'm very glad to be able to tell you that Chesterfield Behind the Mic is back on the air. Uh, we have a really, I think, a really interesting, really cool show planned for you today. Um, there's a lot going on in the county. There was a, um, a special air plan uh, meeting uh, recently on this. And uh, I'm really glad to be joined by Chris Winslow from the Clover Hill District to, to talk to us today about a lot of things going on down in Clover Hill. Chris, welcome to the podcast. How are you, sir? I am great. Thanks for having me. Uh, and, I, and I'm digging the, the music, the <laughs> intro music. I'm over here jamming a little bit. That was, uh, I, I'm going to take full credit for that. That was definitely my choice. Um, <laughs> lots going Good on job. down in, in Clover Hill, obviously. We'll get to uh, the special air plan and everything um, in a few. But I'm just curious, um, in, from your point of view, um, what, what, what kind of things do you, are you seeing lately, the kind of you know, big ticket, sort of big um, focus items down in Clover Hill? Because it seems like, Lately, at least, there's a whole lot going on in, in your part of the woods, so to speak. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, very, very good assessment. Uh, so recently, we were able and fortunate enough to open a brand new Reams Road Elementary School. And uh, so that capacity is at 750. So we're able to up that a little bit from what it was and really take a school that was fairly old and a little bit dilapidated and turn it into something that the whole community can be proud of in that mm -hmm. area. So mm -hmm. it's something that uh, I'm really, really proud of because right. um, originally we actually had budgeted just a refurbishment of that mm -hmm. building, maybe doing a little renovation. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were able with the last school board to really come together and push another $100 million into those projects. So renovated schools became new schools. Mm -hmm. And that so it, that took place at, at Crestwood and at Ettrick and, mm -hmm. and and so um, it's a big deal to have one of those new schools right in the heart of Clover Hill and, and really excited about that. Yeah. And then obviously, too, you know, as somebody who, you know, and, and I kind of talked to Mr. Holland about this when he was on the show recently, too. You know, as an elected official, you know, one of your your chief, you know, reasons for doing the job, right, is to try your best to make sure that the people are getting what they need. Right. That the, that the county government is running well, efficiently and giving folks the services and things that they want. And I, I don't know if there's anything more important, you know, than when it comes to education and making sure kids are comfortable, they have what they need to be successful. When you, as you view your job and, and as you have, um, you know, been a part of these conversations and trying to do that work in the community, how, how does that piece of it fit for you? What's, what, what are your guiding principles when it comes to sort of being a supervisor? Well, I think you're, you've kind of hit the, the nail on the head. There's some basics here. Mm -hmm. So, People want to make sure they have an excellent education for their kids. Mm -hmm. They want safe communities. Mm -hmm. uh, they want communities that have good transportation. We control some of that. Some of that is up to VDOT. And so that's sort of a, a, a push and pull. A push and, yep. pull. Yep. and then, you know, they want something to do with their kids at nights and on the mm -hmm. weekends. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have um, a responsibility in each of those areas to make sure we're delivering the very best and, living up to that first choice community that we have on all of our signs. Yeah, so for sure. When you say first choice community, people are going, okay, <laughs> you know, what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. Well, it, it means, you know, the best. We say right. that, we, and, and people vote with their feet. Mm -hmm. When I say that, it's very important because people are coming to Chesterfield. They're coming to Chesterfield right. for good schools. They're right. coming to Chesterfield because it's a safe community. Right. So we're we're doing a lot of things right here, mm -hmm. and I think we can see that in many statistics. You know, some of the pandemic numbers you have to probably put an asterisk right. for. for sure. but, but you for know, sure. a lot of people don't realize that pre-pandemic, our poverty rate numbers were coming down in mm -hmm. Chesterfield County. I mean, they and so many other statistics, too, we could go into. But we're doing a lot of good things here, and I'm really proud of the work of the entire board. Yeah. yeah. Now, what the reason? part of the reason I ask that question is because as we talk about the special air plan and what's going on at Genito and 288 and with uh, River City and the Southside Speedway and everything, is this idea of, you know, better serving the community, right? You talked about, like, the idea that um, – you know, as as residents, you know, you're asking people, this is a first choice community. Well, then their question must be, well, what are my choices? You know, and what <laughs> choices are there? Right. You know, and you talked about, you know, VDOT and, and road improvements. And that's certainly a, an aspect of, of this uh, special area plan I want to talk about in a second. But in the big picture, you know, when I look at this and certainly, you know, watching that community meeting last month, um, you know, one of the things that really st stood out to me is the idea of being proactive versus reactive. 
you know, sports tourism, and we'll get into that in a minute, is such a huge opportunity for Chesterfield. It is. And, it, and, and as much as, you know, the county has to be mindful of how to best, you know, educate kids and provide services, sports tourism gives the county a way to make revenue without necessarily providing all of those types of services for, for those same folks who bring in that revenue. You know, it used to be sleepy little communities, you know, all across the United States were able to basically lean on property tax, right? You didn't have as many services that you need to provide and you didn't have as many people to provide them for. Now in the 21st century, you've got to figure out ways to be proactive about that. And so let's talk a little bit about the special area plan. First off, give me some history on this. How long ballpark has the county been working on this and how long have you been involved in this? So let me say you're, you're exactly right on your last point from a revenue stream perspective. We have to always be looking at that because the landscape's always changing from a state funding perspective. People don't realize mm -hmm. how often the state will, for instance, last year they took uh, one and a half million dollars of recordation money uh, that comes from Chesterfield citizens and put it toward the Hampton Roads bridge tunnel. Why did they do that? Don't know. Did they call us and ask us about it? Probably not. Nope. <laughs> and and so recently we found out that uh, revenue sharing uh, is is going away altogether until mm. 2027, and that's a big hunk of transportation dollars locally that that we've got to find a, a gap for now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just want to say we've always got to be looking uh, at different revenue streams because of that. Uh, the special area plan came to be because Gloria and I sort of were having a conversation. And I'm talking about Gloria Fry, mm -hmm, who's the, the chairman, yep. uh, chairwoman of our planning commission and uh, does a wonderful, wonderful job. She has a long history of land use and just um, has the respect of the entire region and, uh, and uh, you know, beyond. But right. uh, she and I were talking about this area because the, the sportsplex is obviously becoming more and more critical. We get uh, about $41 million annually, mm -hmm. uh, Chesterfield County does, uh, due to sports tourism. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we start to look at the centerpiece of that, and that is River City Sportsplex. Right. So, you know, the idea was we've got to look at this area. We've got the Lake Project uh, right across from Clover Hill High School. Uh, River City Sportsplex, you've got the Southside Speedway here. There's a lot of different uses in the area. You've got a rock quarry, Mid-Atlantic Steel, mm -hmm. Oak Lake uh, Business Park. There's a lot of things going on. And so we were trying to say, okay, this, this area really looks like it's going to be important from a development standpoint. We need to figure out how to get it right mm -hmm. and make sure that it has that type of family atmosphere that I think a first choice mm -hmm. expectation would yield. Right. So um, uh, things like uh, pedestrian facilities, right. Uh, right. street trees, street lights, all the way through this area so that you know you're in a place, a special right. place where you can come and recreate with your family and maybe see a tournament, maybe right. maybe a game or something, and uh, and have a good time. Maybe, maybe some restaurants right, or right. what have you. So we're just trying to pull it all together right. and make some sense of this area because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's almost like you you have a series of sentences and you'd like to have a paragraph. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. I mean, and and so one of the one of the you know the obvious things whenever you you look at some sort of plan like this is traffic, right? And I, sure. I know that that's a big concern for folks who live in and around that area. Sure. Um, in terms of the plan and in terms of how it handles, you know, traffic and the, and the sort of idea that if you're going to build all these fields, and we'll get to that in a second, and you're going to do all this work to bring these folks in, how are, how are we going to handle all these folks? Um, as, you, as you guys have worked through this plan and have talked through this with planning staff, what are the biggest hurdles and the biggest challenges in terms of handling sort of the ingress, egress aspect of all this? So good, good question. And I'll start with the lake project, which mm -hmm. took some time a number of years ago to, to get through uh, the zoning because it was probably the most complex zoning case Chesterfield County has seen mm -hmm. in a decade. And so uh, Gloria expertly shepherded that through and phased it out. But one of the things we were able to do is work with the developer to get a set aside for an exit ramp off of 288 South mm -hmm. onto Genito. Right. But then that started uh, yielding other conversations with staff and transportation staff and, and also uh, our economic development folks to say, well, really, it would be nice to have that on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. So we're working on, I think, a complete solution here, mm -hmm. but you've got to go through 
VDOT, get yeah. the proper permissions. Right. You've got to go through CTB, that is the Commonwealth Transportation Board. Right. And you've got to have the funding. Mm-hmm. And so uh, these things take time. Right. Uh, transportation projects, just the engineering alone and making sure you have the environmental taken care of. And right. there's, there's, you know, there's boxes you have to check to right. get finally get to building a road. But I think we're making progress. And uh, what I'm seeing from transportation staff in particular is, our, is a real commitment right now to get a plan together and to get it um, in in writing mm-hmm. <laughs> and then submitted to through the proper channel so that we can uh, get this done. Because I think it's going to be really important, as you point out, to um, the success of not only the continued success of River City, but also what happens down the road with uh, the, the Southside Speedway. Right. Uh, uh, area, I'll mm-hmm. just call it, and then um, you know, even further down a little bit, we've got there's going to be some out parcels mm-hmm. um, in that area too. Yeah. So sure, well, and and I think one thing that 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 folks should sort sort of understand in terms of like how you know, for lack of a better description, how the sausage gets made <laughs> is yeah. that it's in the best interest of everyone involved, be that folks who own businesses in the area, folks who want to come, who are Chesterfield residents who want to come and use those facilities, folks who are, are going to visit that all of these decisions happen at almost the same time because the more you know when you're making those road improvements, the more, the more you know about what's going to be there. It's why comp plans matter, right? Yes. It's why planning exists and yes. ultimately, right? So it's good for everybody to understand like, okay, so when River City comes in, we're going to put in, you know, all of these different fields and we're going to, and these are the aspects that we're going to add to it. Um, and you know what you're going to do here and you're talking with about Southside Speedway and what we're going to do there. That when you have that whole picture, it's a whole lot easier to frame it and yes. that's then if you think about road improvements and um, you know traffic abatement and all that fun stuff, that frame is really important because you got to get the people in and out. So I think having all that together makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about River City. So it's a acquired in 2016, 115 acre um, complex, I believe. Obviously, brings a lot of people to the county. I think the numbers that were cited at the community meeting last month: 300,000 visits for residents, but another 200 some thousand for folks outside of Chesterfield, which means a whole lot of traffic, you know, foot traffic, people, you know, using those facilities, improving that area makes the most sense if you just look at it and you look at what's what's there and what's what's available. But in terms of a tourism piece, and we talked before about, you know, the idea of being proactive versus reactive, Mm -hmm. sports tourism is such a huge boon for not just, you know, localities, but specifically for residents who potentially could, you know, not only just use the facility during the week when those tournaments and stuff aren't happening, but then also reap the benefits as a county from the revenue that's made. In in your eyes, how important is that sports tourism piece for Chesterfield specifically, especially at this site? Oh man, I think it's critical here. I mean, as I said earlier, this is a this is our number one producing site. When you think about it, everybody has a connection in some way to sports tourism. Maybe mm-hmm. they've gone to a professional game or maybe they've taken their, their child to a tournament in some right. other city or what have you. But everybody has has seen, they may not realize it, but they've seen the power of what sports tourism can bring to a locality. Globally, $323 billion, $323 billion, I want to say it again, <laughs> uh, because it's such a big number. And, and so when you look at what that could mean, as folks come to River City, as they come to perhaps other venues Mm -hmm. that may be located in in this uh, area plan in the future, we have an opportunity here to capture revenues from heads on beds, they call it in the hotel industry, uh, restaurants, uh, certainly the gas stations and things like that, uh, t-shirt sales. You think about all of the people who are involved, mm-hmm. just like yourself. I mean, here we are doing a podcast. I mm-hmm. mean, there's media, there's people doing graphic design, there's the guy selling t-shirts. Right. There's all this stuff that goes along mm-hmm. in economics that go along with sports tourism. And it's only going to grow because I think uh, fundamentally – Everybody loves competition. Mm-hmm. Don't you love competition? <laughs> and you could say whatever it is, right? It could be rowing. It could yeah. be pickleball. Right. Thank you, Linda Scott. I'm giving you a plug. <laughs> uh, it could be, uh, you know, lacrosse or field right, hockey, right. what have you. But we all really love, I think, as human beings to see competition. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think this is, 
if there's a, a you know a close thing to sure money or a sure bet, right, yeah. I do think this is as close as it gets. Right. And you never want to say that as a politician, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll just throw it out there. So, <laughs> and but you know, you talk about uh, I want to I want to get these numbers right. So thirty two million dollars that the county made uh, in fiscal twenty one um, over forty eight sports tournament events uh, throughout that year. Yes, and when you think about if you add to that and the and the the bandwidth that that site could have and um, as important as sports tourism can be for the county um, as just it kind of goes hand in hand with that is the opportunity to you know to really take hold of not just the the the, the events themselves because you have more availability in fields and That's things right. but then also too what's in that area because look if you drive up 288 and you get off at Broad Street there are hotels there are restaurants and everything's pushing west yes right. And it makes sense for Chesterfield to be looking at this site and saying, if we're going to bring the people here, we should also serve the people here, right? right? We should have them in the restaurants. We should have the beds, you know, for for them in hotels. We should have the, you know, the the recreation beyond the fields for them to do stuff while their family is here for this event. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, as you go forward in terms of, you know, putting together a plan for that area to be able to really um, capture that. Um, and I think that's obviously a big focus, even if the county is not necessarily saying, hey, we're going to put in this restaurant and this. It's more about making the opportunity available. And I think that's really where the special area plan really comes into effect. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not in the business, I would say, of, of picking winners and losers. Right. But we are trying to set the table for success in this area through mm -hmm. this plan. Mm -hmm. And so that means having conversations with people who are you know, representatives of investors, sports tourism professionals, the public, uh, and others to just try to say, okay, what do we think has the highest public utility for this site? Right. What do we think is the highest return on investment for citizens on this site? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I would kind of feel um, bad if we, you know, I don't want to end up with a McDonald's out there. I'll be honest with you. Right. I mean, I'd like to have some higher quality mom and pop type stuff out right. there, as I think most people would. Right. Um, as far as restaurants go, and the same thing with the hotels. I mean, we should be shooting high mm -hmm. for that first choice community, and um, and so that means everything in that area. We want it to 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 scream that at people. Yeah. Say, okay. Wow. This is this is something. Right. I, I'm at River City. That's right. where I am, and this right. is. And so we've talked about so many different aspects of of what that could look like, and honoring the Speedway and and its history there, and. Uh, making sure that the 16 fields we ultimately end up with at River City, uh, once fully built out, uh, when you when you look at the the possibilities and the opportunities that that alone does, mm -hmm. uh, the sizes of tournaments and the numbers of people right. and uh, potential to land those dollars uh, during those visits is. Mm -hmm. is pretty good for us yeah now you mentioned <laughs> the speedway let's talk a little bit about that sure so at the community meeting uh last month there was obviously a lot of discussion about the speedway and that's a a, a a real focal point for a lot of really passionate folks who who care deeply about its heritage who care Absolutely. deeply about what it means to them and what it means to the county um i think it's fair to say that in terms of you know being proactive you know holding that property and not letting it get chopped up into little bits over time was you know probably the right call yes now as the county sort of looks at okay what's the next phase for for that property I got the sense in, in watching the in meeting and certainly in, in talking with you and, and others that if there was an opportunity to really for somebody to come in and run a speedway and that kind of thing that, you know, you guys are obviously listening. Like the county is not closed off to that potential, but there's also the reality that, you know, in a lot of ways, the market sort of decides what the market decides. And at least right now, the opportunity for, for that property to serve multiple uses is probably the one that the market likes best. How would you sort of frame the decision ahead for, for Southside Speedway? And where do you feel like things are right now? I mean, I think, I think we are open. We want mm -hmm. to remain open. This is the time when those who are interested in a potential venue should come forward. And so mm -hmm. we've really tried to say that as many different venues and places as possible because there really is an openness, I think, on the part of the Board of Supervisors to hear business plans, to hear about financing and, and potential needs uh and 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 then you know evaluate each of those through those lenses of public utility and return mm -hmm. on investment in right. particular you know as well as you know i think we always have to take um a step back and and remember we have citizens who live right here we have mm -hmm. neighborhoods right down the road and right. so whatever we do we need to make sure that it works for them 
right. and that it's because uh, that's going to be next door to them. Right. <laughs> that's right. And so that's very, very important, I think, is to involve everybody uh, in this in the context of, of these decisions. Um, but but again, I, I think at least for me and I speak for the rest of the board, but public utility is really important. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent that um, people in Chesterfield are able to use facilities on a daily basis, that that to me is very important for tax dollars. Right. Absolutely. Last thing for you in terms of time frames. Sure. Um, now, I'm not going to ask you to be Nostradamus and <laughs> a specific date here. Right. But I'm just curious so we could give folks kind of a general feel for, OK, where you know, what's the process look like? Because we talk about an area plan and we talk about, you know, conversations that need to happen. When 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 does real rubber meet the road? And I don't you know, I know that's a bad pun. Considering this <laughs> way, but no, when, you know, when does, when does the thing <laughs> well, I appreciate that? <laughs> when does when does, you know, real motion start to get in place? How far out do you feel like you really are on this? Uh, you know, I I don't want to set a hard and fast time uh, to it, mm -hmm. but I do think this is the time to have the conversations. Right. And, you know, to the extent that that is adjusted or flexible a little bit, that's okay. Uh, we There's certainly time, and I don't think there's any deadline, but I do think that uh, in terms of bringing this public plan forward, we do need to start creating the expectations with the community of what will be here and not leave it open-ended for forever. Right. For sure. <laughs> so there is, I think there is an end date. I can't tell you what that is, but right. I, I, as I've tell, told everybody, we will sit down our economic development and our folks will sit down and hear whatever proposal you or your team may have so that we can properly go through as a board of supervisors and evaluate these plans. Mm -hmm. and it's just, and it's important to keep that process iterative mm -hmm. and evaluate each plan and, and each potential venue through the same lens, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, and just, just to be fair to Absolutely. anybody coming to the county yeah. and then also doing a good job and, right. and involving the public uh, to the extent we have those evaluations ready for public consumption. We can share kind of our thoughts. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris, I very much appreciate your time. That was, uh, I mean, you know, obviously this is a, a lot going on down there. Sure. Um, you got your hands full, it seems like. That's with, a lot with everything. On. But I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing on some level it's kind of fun. You know, it's why you get into public service, right, is to do some good. And uh, I hope uh, hope everything goes well. And thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. All right. You can uh, follow us on social media. Uh, on Twitter, it's Chesterfield VA. On Instagram, it's Chesterfield Virginia, all one word. And on Facebook, you can check out our podcast page. Just search Chesterfield Behind the Mic. Make sure to like that page and keep up with us as we go forward. Now, let me give you all the ways that you can check out the show. You can watch our YouTube channel or our website, chesterfield.gov slash podcast. An audio-only version of the show is also available there, as well as on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, basically wherever podcasts are sold. You can also watch the podcast on WCCT. That's Thursday through Sunday uh, at 7 p.m. and then on the weekends at noon. That's Comcast Channel 98 and Verizon Channel 20. Um, lastly, you can check out chesterfield.gov slash connect for more ways to get in touch with us. We always appreciate that. Um, for, let's see, my director, Martin Stiff, I got my executive producer, Susan Pollard, and everybody here at Communications and Media. Thank you very much for everything that you do. We really appreciate it. And yeah, from all of us here at Chesterfield County, thank you very much for making us a part of your day. We'll see you again soon. Take care.